All right, you welcome back to the program. As we now continue to focus on the final segment of the show, it will be on politics. The political season is in full swing, and parties are going about their campaigns in different manners. Some have suspended their campaigns due to one challenge or the other, or well, the latest is the All Progressives Congress, which has now released its working committee for its presidential campaign. However, concerns by many Nigerians would be just what will be the focal points of campaign rallies across the country. Indications are that bits and pieces may rely on sabotaging the integrity of the other contestants and other issues that may not necessarily affect the Nigerian people. How can we begin to have a conversation on the implications of the elections, not just on those who win or lose, but on the generality of Nigeria as a whole, ensuring that the campaigns are majorly focused on the issues that affect the nation is what we're looking at in this final segment of the show. Joining us to discuss this is Siddiqui Olayinka, who is a political analyst, who is joining us from Abuja Studios. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. All right. It looks like you're more in a much more comfortable environment uh, uh, rather than our studios for you. <laughs> Thank you nonetheless for making time for us. So let's, let's get to the conversation now. Campaigns have started. However, it appears attacks on the personalities is what we have seen in the first couple of days. What is your take on this tactic, which appears to be the normalcy when political seasons come around in Nigeria? Well, um, just like you have rightly noted, the um, campaign have started fully, and um, anchorages of political parties are been throwing banters at each other. Nigerians normally or ordinarily would not expect this to be, we would expect that we will be having conversations surrounding the developmental issues that we have in Nigeria. You know, we have manifesto out there discussing the issues of um, politics, um, social economic development, um, politics, issues of policies and other, other issues that they would um, want to sell to Nigeria. What you have here and there is attack based on ethnic um, group, based on personality, based on health grounds, a whole lot of issues. But I am uh, more concerned that Nigerians want to hear more of the issues. They want to know how you will solve the economic problem, the insecurity problem. They want to see how you would um, politically resolve the issues around oil thefts and other development issues. Uh, but what you see is um, issues of um, it's either a milocon or it's issues of oh dear um, well yeah we do hope that uh, technology will allow us to have this issue based <laughs> um, conversation uh, ahead of the 2023 general elections mm. because Wilson it is very important it is very important that message. there should be a focus because this distraction sometimes derail us and we get so carried away by the drama, we get so carried away by the banterings here and there, hitting each other left, right, and center. Without any promise. And we talk about For it. the people. Exactly. And we I mean, now the conversation the is on who traveled for what reason. That appears to be what the uh, 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 public engagers from the campaigns are doing right now. Who has traveled, uh, what was the mood of their traveling, if there was a pillow behind their back. None of this has seemed to be an issue. When we had concerns about President Buhari uh, coming into office and his health, you know, that appeared to be the mo major focal point of the opposition, rather than asking for policies that he would do should he be elected into office, which is what Nigerian people must begin to have come 2023. I guess they're, uh, they're looking yes. for um, below the belt points, you know, to give to the opposition to be able to, you know, win the emotion of the people over to the other side. Okay, um, we've got uh, Sidiku back. Thank you so much, Sidiku Lainka, uh, for joining us. We hope uh, the internet will be good to us today so we can have this conversation. Just round up your thoughts and um, I'll go ahead with the next question. Mm -hmm. 
so it, you might have you might need to unmute your device you want to check if there's a need for you to unmute it if you've done that um uh, that's absolutely fine if you've done that you can go ahead and, and speak with us Yes, thank you very much. Um, um, I'll be a little bit of difficulty hearing him here, but I can hear you clearly now. So we are talking about how um, political parties um, should be the driver of strategic purpose, um, where political parties should um, have um, what should be in the manifestos, educating Nigeria, conscientizing Nigeria, and letting Nigeria sell it, selling themselves and marketing their candidates to Nigeria on the issues, issues surrounding insecurity, economic development and all other issues like that but um you know it is nigeria and what we have is attacks here and there so you want to see how very important it is for them to come around to sign that part that part that says the um, presidential campaign um processes will be duly based or, or, or revolving around the issues rather than attacking person and personalities of the people that are contesting for the position of president in nigeria but it is okay to attack personality. It's not only in Nigeria that this happened. This happened everywhere else in the world. But um, the only difference is that in this um, other part of the world, they have, they have they don't have much of security issues. They have power supply for 24 hours a day. They have water running. They have gas running. They don't have an um, issue of um, um, currency or FX issues, just like we have in Nigeria. So if you ask me, I tell you that this is a very important time in history where we have um, political parties doing all they can do to enlighten Nigeria on the need why their candidate is the best person to lead Nigeria in these um, trying times. We, we are in the jackpot season. People are moving out of Nigeria in their thousands to seek um, dinner pastures abroad. They need to reassure Nigeria that if you stay in Nigeria, uh, there, there's future for you, there's hope for you. You know, these are the things that we should be talking about, not issue of um, personal aggrandizement, not issue issue of entitlement, not issue of um, wrong um, data deliveries, putting wrong figures, not issue of ethnic or gender bias or all those things. So we need to focus on issues issues of um, security, issues of economic development, issue of, issues of social and infrastructural development, issue of unity, Nigeria needs to be united again. Nigeria is more divided now than ever. There's a need for us to consolidate, integrate, and bring people together, irrespective of their, um, their, their demography, whether or not it's the, it's the age, age group difference, whether or not it's the religious difference, or not the ethnocentric difference and all that um, biases. They are just not what we should be discussing now. We should be discussing issue of development, all round holistic and all encompassing development. These are the things we should be talking about now. Well, um, spot on, uh, we should be talking about such things. Um, I, I really would like to also get to comment on the issue of using emotions to sway people because I think um, that sells a lot in Nigeria uh, from even products uh, people don't really want to take a look at what the product entails and what it can do. But when they sell, you know, the products using, you know, emotional um, uh, stories, you, you get swayed and you move along the tide. Now that that could also be used in politics, and as we've seen so far, I mean, how can people be weary? Should they see a particular campaign that is just filled with things to sway their emotions? Um, should let people understand. Go ahead and educate us. Yeah, I think. Part of what happened this time around is also emotional swing. People will tell you why their own candidate is better than the other. They will quote um, a lot of issues that have happened to the candidates before, uh, probably that are not even the candidate's duty to do. They will tell you all sort of um, issues to um, the market, the other candidates. But those are just issues. What is more important than emotional issues are um, the issues that concerns Nigerians ordinary Nigeria, the issue of um, policies and how it will affect um, ordinary Nigerians. This issue of policies should um, revolve around the economic policies. Now, right as, as we have it today, Nigeria um, inflation rates is um, 
between 20.5% to about 20.7%. The consumer price index has also increased. Um, our GDP is doing very, very good, but um, 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 GDP to per capita ratio is very low. Uh, you see, we have on one side where uh, people are in the creek stealing the oil and exporting the oil that is supposed to be enjoyed by people of that region and at uh, the long run, the poor of Nigeria. So these are the issues. We have the issue of security, kidnapping here and there. These are the issues that we should be talking about. But they will come to you with all emotional issues. Okay, this guy is old. He, he doesn't have the um, mental balance or the physical capabilities or capacity to be able to deliver. They will tell you, you cannot stand um, for five hours, cannot stand for six hours, that it will collapse. They will tell you that this one is um, just quoting wrong figures. He has promised to build skyscraper in the year. And he has promised to deliver economy in, in the next one year. You know, all these things will keep coming to the front burner. And there are emotional issues. We call them the reverse psychology strategy by the political um, elites. They will use that one to sway people from the issues that are really affecting them, which um, are the basic issues of food pricing in Nigeria, the basic issue for of water in Nigeria, the basic issue of um, out of school children in Nigeria, the basic issue of you know we have a whole lot of issues that we should be talking about in this um, um, campaign leading to our elections. If those issues are issues that are discussed, as opposed to all those emotional um, outbursts or emotional campaign, I think Nigerians will be more conscientized, Nigeria will be more focused on where to vote and how to vote. And I think the media need to play um, a lot of role in this, in this regard. I, I believe the political parties also need to come in. They have to sensitize um, their voter, their, their base, let them know what their candidates are about, not um, what other candidates cannot do, but what their own candidates can do better than the other candidates. How the numerous challenges that we have in Nigeria can be solved, and what their candidates is bringing differently, as opposed to what the current government of um, President Muhammadu Buhari is doing right now. So I think these are the issues that we should be discussing, not emotional issues. The emotional issues will come. In fact, financial issues with more poverty, uh, emotional issues, uh, people will be financially induced. You know, poverty rate has increased, unemployment rate has increased, underemployment rate has increased. So, so many issues like this would um, sway people from the right thing to be discussing, which is the issues of security, the issues of um, economic development, the issues of um, out of school children, the issues of pricing, the issue of infl inflation, how Nigeria can uh, move from, um, you know, a, 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 an import dependent economy to an export economy, because that's are the main issues that are affected, that are affecting Nigeria right now. And these are the issues that should make up the campaign, should make, these are the issues that the political party should be focused on in order for them to be able to drive home their points and set their manifestos um, to um, the entire population of that base. Okay, then why then does it appear to sell, as Mercy pointed out earlier? Is it a factor of the people or a factor of the politics that we play around here? When you speak of, you know, uh, media houses playing their role, we've always had an avenue for debates. We've always had invitations for, me, for, for political uh, spokespersons to speak. But you find that the candidates themselves prefer to be absent from debates altogether but we'll rather go ahead and make statements about the other candidates, which would then probably play in one way or the other in the mind of their voters. Why is it that the case? Is this a peculiarity to the way the people function? And who then must be responsible for changing that narrative? Thank you very much. That's a very brilliant question. I think um, all, all of them watching us now will be tapping themselves, asking themselves whether or not um, Nigerians are watching and are taking into consideration all these things. You see, the issue of um, political parties and their representatives, the issue of um, voters' knowledge and understanding are very, very important issues. People are invited for um, programs where they are 
able to speak to their programs, their policies, their manifestos, where people can hear from them and they don't attend. You see, uh, some people will tell you that probably they don't know what they are selling or they can't actually drive home their um, intentions for Nigeria. But some other people um, will tell you that the candidates themselves don't know have to attend these events. You know, they would come to TVs, they will argue these back and forth, and they will tell you that there's nothing that states that the candidates have to, as, as, um, to accept or attend all these um, events in person. So far, they are representatives who can actually drive home their points and uh, sell them to the to, to that to that base and to would be electorates. So they are, they are satisfied. Stra strategies differ on baseline with political parties and, 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 and candidates. But candidates who respect Nigerians, can, candidates who have a deep understanding of the issue, candidates who is not fear to discuss the issue, candidates who is really um, um, in, 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 in depth knowledge and understanding of the challenges and political uh, and issues that we have in Nigeria would attend this event. So when you get to this event, you have to, you have to ask also what are the intentions of those who are organizing this debate, this, this debate event? Are they um, neutral? Are they fair? Or is this just an avenue to sell or to rubbish or to other um, political parties? We have seen events that happen with ICANN. Those who attended, we have seen the one that happened with um, MBA. We have seen all sorts of events. But we have also seen them that right now they are coming out. Candidates are now coming out to sell themselves. They are coming out more now to tell Nigerians what they have to offer and what, are, what their manifestos are and um, how they intend to fund and achieve all these things that they set out. But media, on the part of media, media need to keep um, remain, remembering all these um, aspirants of their past, what they said they would do in the past, how far they fed. Media need to do more of the investigative work, the investigative journalism, have to go deep in issues. Not being bothered about the personality of, um, of, of, of candidates alone, you see sometimes reporters, um, out there, they also take sides, which is very wrong. They would openly almost declare for a candidate and um, you know speak very sore of the other candidates. These are the things that need the media needs to um, check to ensure that um, they, they are very neutral and they play neutral and they remain neutral and they create a fair platform for all candidates to be able to attend and give account of their activities both in the past and what they intend to do for Nigeria in the future. But that is the only way Nigerians can choose. Where they can choose who or how this candidate will be fair when they eventually become the president of Nigeria. So everybody has a role to play, including the electorates. Electorates now have to also understand that issues should guide how they vote. It should not be an issue of emotional um, 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 seducement. It should not be an issue of um, financial uh, an issue of financial settlement or financial inducement so it has to be based on issues and these issues of security that they want to see is what they are voting for the issue of economic development that they want to see is that what they are voting for voting for the issue of policy policy that is bottom to all policy that include everybody's what they want Cynical, to see what they are voting for Cynical, as opposed to what we used to have in the past I mean, you just preempted the next question that I, I really wanted to ask you um, as to one thing, one sector in Nigeria that, you know, that the solution can be preferred to, that can serve as a silver bullet with which every other, you know, issues in Nigeria, you know, will fall into place if that one thing is sorted out. So if that's one thing, if there's one thing you really want to hear any of the presidential um, con um, candidates talk about, a proof of solution to what would that issue be? Okay, 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 thank you for that question. That's a very tricky question because all issues are important, right? All issues of policies are important to government. And um, but if you want to, um, you know, base them on, on values and categories, you know, one must be more important than the other. So what I think is more important right now is the issue of security. You know. Uh, you cannot, if you don't solve the issue of security, you cannot solve the issue of economic, economy. If you don't solve the issue of economy, you cannot solve the issue of policy. 
if you don't solve the issue of our policies, then you cannot, you don't have any issues to solve. Because issues that are happening in the society, in the in the policy environment, is what culminates into policy in a, in, 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 a, in a more um, a mature climb. Uh, the go around um, the nooks and carry of the country to get issues and the formulate do the, the, the package those issues and formulate them into policy. Those policies now savage issues of security, issues of economy and other social development issues that we have. But just like you, you had the issue of security is very, very important. You cannot solve the issues of um, economic, the issue of um, unemployment, the issue of bad governance, bad rules without the issue of you know, um, um, security. Investors that you want, if you say you want to turn Nigeria to a, a, a productive um, economy rather than a, a dependent or a, a, a non productive economy, you would have to solve the issue of security for the, um, the investors to come in. Investors will not bring their money into a country where in, um, um, they will be kidnapped, where in their staff will, be, will not be able to work under a conducive. An environment that is um, necessary for them to do their jobs. Another thing that is very important is the policy issue. The policy that we are formulating should be friendly enough to solve all the problems. The problem of social infrastructure development, problems of security, insecurity, problems of um, um, economy, and other challenges that we have in Nigeria. But chief among all these problems is the problem of security. Once that is solved, then we can now solve other problems alongside that problem of insecurity. But on the border, we have security. We have insecurity that have to be solved. We have issues of economy that have to be solved. Then we have issue of social development, infrastructural development that have to be solved. And all these policies can only be, all these challenges, issues, problems can only, only be solved by a, by a well-grounded policy framework that's holistic, that we carry along everybody. Uh, do you think this would then have implications on the quality of leaders that we produce? Yes, definitely this has implications. But um, I, I belong to the school of thoughts who rather would um, fix the system, the institution, um, then look at the kind of leaders that would, um, would elect. If you have our uh, institutions working, you know, the leaders who come in would be forced to operate under the guise of that institution, under the laws, under the system that has been already established, they would be forced to work under it, on it. Let's take, for instance, what happened in the United States election during the last election, the United States the presidential election, to be precise. We know from what we read or what we saw on TV that uh, there are attempts for um, a certain presidential candidate to try to induce a, non, a named state to uh, you know, tweak the number around and favor their candidates. But you see, in those states where the call were made to, they made it clear that they serve not the president, but the institutions and the system. So because of the institution that work, because of the system that work, that candidate was unable to carry out or perpetrate such heinous act. So if you have our system working, we have our institution working, irrespective of the kind of leader that we have, of course, we're going to be having the good leaders then if the leader come in they would work based on the what the system and the institutions um provides uh, um, as opposed to their own understanding of how government should work in their own beliefs all right uh, it, it's it's quite interesting that you know you, you point that out but you know many would then say that you know having conversations with the candidates themselves possibly uh, have a rethink uh Put a mind, put a, a rethink on political parties and the candidates they present to the people for elections. This is why I asked if you know having issues before the candidates would then have a change uh, on the kind of candidates that we see uh, on election ballots. That would, that would that would always be an issue, you know. People expect to see or to hear directly from the candidate that are presenting to political parties. Definitely, definitely. You cannot take that off the hood. People would like to hear directly from um, the political parties and their, especially their representatives. So it is very important that um, the candidates come out to speak. It also shows how much they will be um, talking to the people when they become uh, the president eventually. 
if a president is not, if, a, if an aspirant is not talking to you now, how are you sure that when that person becomes the president, he will talk to you? You see, communication is very, very important. And um, at every point in time, when leaders are called upon to come and give account of their activities or what their activities will look like or will be, they should be able to come out to discuss this. And when questions are being thrown at them, they should be able to respond. Because the intellectual capacity of candidates are very important. They have to be able to respond to the question, the their mental readiness, their consciousness, their level of mental alertness is very important. So people will be able to see how fit they are for governors or for governments whenever whenever they, 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 they come into power. So it is very important that, that candidates come out to speak directly to electorates because at the end of the day, it's about being accountable and they have to be accountable to um, those that are better than me. So it is very important that we have leaders who are communicating, we have leaders who are responsive, we have leaders who are also very, very receptive and conscious of what the aspirations and yearnings of the electorates are. So in, in our climbs, it's a little bit different, but our style is our style. Electorates will decide at the end of the day what leaders that they want. But what I, what, I, what, I, what is more important to us right now is the manifesto, is the knowledge and understanding of the problems and the challenges, the issues that we have in Nigeria and how the leaders intend to solve those problems. Thank you so much. I even like the fact that you even mentioned the issue of accountability and the election has been the one at the end of the day who is going to go um, uh, put their thumbprint to uh, to the ballot papers to vote for uh, whoever is going to be you know, the hems of affairs in different cadres of government. So the people have a responsibility. The electorates who are being spoken to have a responsibility to say, oh, Oga, okay, I think you're being, you're, you're being too um, emotional here or you're focusing on the wrong thing. We want you to talk to us about certain issues. I wonder the role of um, what's called the citizens and the electorates in helping to set you know, the, this, these candidates you know, in the right direction so that they can get the benefit for you know, um, get the right knowledge ahead of uh, the general elections. In closing, please. Okay, um, I think it is very important that they, they understand that Nigerians, Nigerians have needs, and this is very important to um, all of us. We have needs, our needs are known. All of us, almost all of us, know the problems that we have in Nigeria today, but um, uh, we also can prefer solutions to all the challenges that we face. But um, how many of us actually can tell us exactly what to be done and how to do it in order to solve these problems? And that is why we need these people up there. They need to continue, continuously speak to us. They need to um, be accountable. They need to come out at every point in need to tell us what they will do differently from this administration. Government does not happen in vacuum. It's, in, it's, it's, it's continuum. So whatever that we wherever that we have that we have right now as a country, we believe we can do better, and uh, we believe Nigeria with our natural resources, with our uh, um, human capacity, with our uh, um, all of that things that we have in this country, we should not be where we are today. People have needs, and they want this need met. So what are the needs that we have? We have the needs to have a safer climate. We need a secured country. We need an economy that will be able to thrive not only within, but will be able to thrive outside of the shores of Nigeria. We need a stable um, currency. We need children to go back to school. We don't need, we don't need us to go back or strike, we need to have an understanding, a clear understanding on issues or development. We need to have other things working for us at the country. So what are the things that we need to do? We need to understand the leaders of the political parties, especially the presidential candidates, what they are bringing on board. They need to tell us. And based on what they tell us, either at events or during their manifestos, will determine our electorate we vote or where our votes will swing. So right now, they should tell, talk to us about the issues, not issue of ethnic or religious bias. Men of God, clerics should understand that electorates in their churches cut across all religion, Christians, Muslims, people who believe in 
Tinubu, you know, people who believe in Atiku Abubakar, people who believe in Kwakwaso, people who believe in um, Peter Obi, they should allow people to vote based on their conscience and based on their needs. They should not use their, the opportunity they have to swing or to try to uh, induce people to vote. This is very important, apart from media, apart from the political parties, apart from the electorates, the, the churches, uh, the, 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 the mosque, the faith-based organizations, and um, the um, struggle groups need to conscientize and inform Nigerians but need to vote based on the issues that we have. These issues are the issues we have been mentioning yeah. this morning. These are the issues that we are faced with, and these are the issues that have to be solved in order for us to have a united country that is void of issues. Yeah, that's a very, very perfect place to leave it. Yes, a warning and a, and a urge to religious leaders to play their roles in helping the people to go and vote as against who to vote for when the elections come around. Thank you so much, Siliko Olainka, who is a political analyst, for joining us from the nation's capital uh, on this particular interesting segment, which we hope political parties can key into as time progresses. Thank you very much for having me. Right. That's a good place for us to lead the conversation this morning with the urge for you, the Nigerian, to go out and ensure you ask questions on how those looking to get your vote on election day will impact you, not just at federal level, but at state level as well, including your local government. It is very critical to know what they intend to do for you when they get into office. Missy. Spot and Wilson, thank you so much, everybody, for being a part of the conversation today. For those of you who called in, who watched, who sent messages on social media, and to all our guests, I mean, you made the show worth it. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And before I quickly leave the studio, I want to say a very big happy birthday to Franklin Zekome, the king of strategy, um, advertising guru, brand strategist, and trend sporter. Um, you are awesome. Thank you so much for being who you are. Happy celebration to you. My name is Mercy Frank, and uh, until Friday, which is open day, do have an awesome day. And I remain Wilson Omoni. Have a fantastic Thursday.